We have a product called Docket Information Management System. <clears throat> and it's basically a way of scanning and archiving documents. So these are the standard document challenges that we have is, you know, where do our documents come from? We still get snail mail, email, printers and copiers, customers are sending us invoices, our accounting department, maybe we have a finance department, human resources department, each of those legally have to be separated. So employees and HR docs, resumes come in, I-9s, all the, you know, the human resources documents that we need, vendor documents, and of course, our tax documents. Where do we keep them? We normally keep them in file cabinets. Some companies pay for offsite storage. Your local PC, local servers, our lo local network attached storage devices. I joke about people, maybe you keep them in the basement somewhere and finally in boxes. The new norm of the office, like what we're going through right now, even pre-COVID, but now it's even more so with everybody working remotely, where do we still keep them? Well, that hasn't changed a lot. We still have filing cabinets. We still pay for the cost of space. The labor cost, as I mentioned, going to get a document, returning it, how many times a day is that being done? Documents not returned to the cabinet. That happens quite a bit in the business. Maybe somebody takes out a file out of a filing cabinet. Maybe it's a salesperson. I, I can speak from experience going back to when I was with Minolte, you go into the filing cabinet. A sales rep took a file out of the filing cabinet. Maybe they left the company. Now the file is gone. And, and it takes a lot of time to recreate that file. Fire and flood will put a business out of business. If you don't have all your paper or a backup or a copy of it, you're out of business instantly. Offsite storage, what is the cost of the service? They charge you every time you need to retrieve a file. Uh, maybe on a local level, your files are shared, maybe they're not shared. Local servers, cost of maintenance, I sell them, I know what they cost to uh, maintain, and network attached storage devices. Now in our post COVID world, you know, we've had a real estate space reduction, uh, headcount is down. Uh, now people are working remotely. They still need to access the documents that they need, but they, do, they don't have that ability to do that. Uh, reduced headcount, as I mentioned. We have a mobile workforce. Maybe you have outside salespeople, et cetera. Uh, there's still printing and copying costs that some businesses you will use to generate paper, how are the documents shared? If we don't have a way of sharing them or a way of retrieving them from the field, then we're relying on somebody in the main office to go look for them for us. How do you access them? How do you find them? And how long does that take and how much money does that cost? So what is Docket Information Management System? Well, Docket is a central management depository of all your business related documents for local remote or mobile employees to access information from anywhere on any storage source. And what do we mean by that? It can be Google Drive, it can be OneDrive, AWS, ShareFile, Dropbox, or private cloud. What documents were, you know, contracts, employment records, invoices, purchase orders, emails, email attachments, I'll show you that, correspondence letters, memos, bills of lading, shipping records, and more. Medical records are a big one. So how is it done? We have several customizable software products that integrate with each other without being a proprietary product. Now there's a lot of document management systems out there, but they're proprietary and you need to have their back end to, in order to retrieve stuff. We don't. So Docket is the front end application which sits on the desktop 
Uh, it's the indexing re retrieval part. Uh, eNotify is a widget that sits in your taskbar to let you know that an end user has new documents to review. It doesn't actually have to be the person who's scanning or indexing. It could be anybody that needs to get notified that a new document has come in. Docket print export is a digital printer. And so instead of printing to a piece of paper, you're actually gonna print to what we call your pre-indexing folder, hot folder, watch folder, whatever you feel like calling it. And it eliminates paper printing and copy of quick charges. And the imaging viewer <clears throat> provides date stamping, note stamping, hyperlinks to other documents and page reordering. And docket scan routing, uh, I don't know if you can see that, it may be blocking this. So scan routing provides automatic, automated workflows from your digital copier, laptop, desktop, or an email platform. Uh, email is a big one I like to use where <clears throat> if you wanted to, for example, in the human resources department, maybe you're getting resumes sent in, but instead of you manually having to review those or uh, index them and, and archive them, we can actually have Outlook or any email application automatically route those to automatically be, automatically be printed right into the system without having to a person manually doing it. Oops. These are just gonna be some screenshots. Now we have a new version, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, Docket, this is the front end application, it really consists of four parts. You have your capture button, your indexing button, and your retrieval button. Now the capture button is strictly only used for someone who has a local desktop scanner um, or they don't have a, like a network copier and they need to do what's called Twain scanning. Like I have a little copier here that uses Twain. But in, in an office that has a multifunction copier printer, we just set up scan folders right on the copier. They hit a button and it scans right into it. So there's no user you know, interface that they have to worry about. The indexing button is where you're assigning your metadata. You decide on the field structure for the naming. It could be as few or as many fields as you want. And retrieving is very simple. You just type in what you're looking for. This is a screenshot of the eNotify widget that sits in the taskbar. In this particular case, it's showing there are three invoices that need to be indexed. And again, that can be sitting on anybody's desktop and they would get a notification that are, there are new documents that have come in. From here, you could actually view, annotate and index right from the screen uh, and it runs in the background on your taskbar and only shows when there are new documents in your pre-index folder. eSearch provides a reduced screen, oops, show you. So in this particular example, you see this is my Alex screen showing. And in the bottom right is a reduced version of it, where if I don't wanna run the application full screen, I could actually have it running in a small window and still be able to search while I'm running in and using another program like Word or Excel or PowerPoint. This is an example of our print export. You can see here on the, on the right, on the left, that instead of me printing to a printer, I'm printing to a digital printer. So it's actually printing, but not paper. The imaging viewer is the retrieval aspect. When you bring up your document to view it, on the left, you'll see there's a bunch of pages. On the right, it's a bigger image of the first page. So here we've stamped it with a approved, uh, let's say if someone needs to put a stamp on, you can use standard stamps or create your own stamps. Uh, here we've highlighted the bottom right, this was in the way. So you can also add sticky notes, time stamps. You could add hyperlinks to other documents if you wanted to.
So in summary, we go from the things that you're already using, such as filing cabinets, from your copiers and your scanners to modern technology and apps that everybody's using every day on their phones or their tablets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a screenshot of OneDrive, which is one of our favorite ones to use because for the most part, everybody's using OneDrive. And it makes it very, very simple to show documents. So this is the, oops, wrong, wrong button. Oh, that's the one I retrieved. Now, this is the, our new version of it. So you see this capture, index, retrieve. So if I was to index a document, I'm gonna skip ahead for this one because I have one just for you, Ronnie. There we go. So this is Ronnie who sent me a link to the Zoom meeting. And I like to bring this up a lot because email gets cluttered. But maybe there's a particular email that you need to quote unquote save or archive or add it to a document. So in this case, I'm just gonna use a very simple one here. I'm gonna click on vendor and I'll make it believe this is Sorry. Uh, let's make believe that's a work order. And I'm just going to give it a number. Put two threes there. And I'm going to index that. That's an invoice that I have from Barracuda. Um, and I'm just two, five, eight, nine, nine. Or, and I index away. So this particular case, it's telling me that I already have a file with that same criteria. I have a choice here, I can delete it, or I can actually add it to an existing one by appending it to an existing document. When I click on append, it's gonna bring up all my other documents. And if I wanted to attach it to an existing document, I would just attach it right here. So maybe it's a series of documents that belong to the same, uh, let's say in a human resources person, maybe it's the same person. Maybe it was their I-9, then their W-4, then their W-2, their health plan, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when I wanna find those documents, I click on my retrieve button. And if I were to type in the word Barracuda now, It's gonna bring up all my Barracuda documents. And for example, if this is the one that I was looking for. I would just, I can click on it once to get a preview of it. I can click on it twice to open it up and look at it. Here's where I can date stamp it and watermark it for if I wanted to stamp that, you know, that it came in, it's approved. If I want to put a little note, I can draw a little box. Uh, got it. I spelled it wrong, didn't I? No, that's fine. Now okay. it's good. So in this particular case, I could either, if I wanted to email this, I could just click on file and send this to somebody through mail. If I wanted to hide the annotations, I can hide them. Maybe I needed to send that off and I didn't want anyone to see all my, my, my uh, annotations. I can make them permanent by clicking here. I could use a highlighter if I wanted to highlight something. And as far as the rubber stamps, you can make as many of these as you want. You can see here is create an image, create text. Uh, you can combine dates and times. So if I wanted to have the approved come, you can see here, I'm just gonna show you. Something. And then I can save it. Uh, you can do wildcard searches too. So if you, uh, for example, I like to use this example. Maybe you don't remember anything about, you get a phone call, which is my best example. Somebody calls somebody up, in the business says, look, I need 
to find this document. I don't know the invoice number, the purchase order number, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I do know a description of what it was that I need. So let's say I'm gonna use the word toner. And that's all the invoices I have that are related to the word toner. And it happens to be this one, I could bring it up. And there's my purchase order for a fellow down in Florida. And if you now think about how long that took me to do that versus somebody going into a filing cabinet doing that. So in this case, I, I could bring it up. Why well, have a customer on the phone saying you need it? Great. Are you by your computer? Yes, I am. It's going to launch Outlook. I'm going to send it to Ronnie. There's Ronnie Rosen. All during a phone call. And that, in, in a quick summary, without Hang on a going... sec. Let me keep going, keep going. Is it there, Sophie? Leslie, can you still hear me? Are you muted? Uh, yeah, I just muted Ronnie, but you go ahead. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> the, uh, so it's really just broken up into capturing your images, indexing them, retrieving them. And the, the beauty is, let me just try to move this over. And then you can see up here in the upper right, this is actually in OneDrive, up in the cloud and on my desktop. So if I were to close this and now if you see this, it says OneDrive, Digital One Source, Doc store finance. While this is showing on my PC locally, I could be on Ronnie's machine and bringing up my OneDrive. If I wanted to do the same thing, I'm just going to look up. <clears throat> and you got to remember, I'm, let's say I'm on a computer somewhere. It's going to bring up everything that I just typed in looking for Barracuda from any place, anywhere. I could be on iDrive, Google Drive, Dropbox, anywhere. And that's the invoice you can see right there. I double click on it, it's gonna launch the same thing. So instead of having filing cabinets, searching for documents, wasting labor costs, I could have everything remotely right from here. Because whether you're using, like I happen to have a Windows phone with OneDrive or you have an Android phone or an iPhone, you can get to any of the cloud storage anywhere, anytime, any place. So I might be a field worker that needs to look up something very quickly. I can go onto my phone. I type in whatever I'm looking for, it pops right up, and I have it. So the other thing that we show on a local level, uh, let me get this out of my way again is what we call a quick search. So now that resembles the same thing in the cloud, but this is on my desktop. So this is actually searching on my desktop through OneDrive into this folder. Uh, if I were to type in, I don't know, that one, two, three, four, five I did before. There's the one we just did for one, two, three, four, five as an example. So, it could be anything that you're looking for locally. So I, I don't even have to have the program open. So actually I have it closed right now. Another example I can give you is, is in QuickBooks. Uh, let's say for example, you were reconciling your statement and during the reconciliation process, you're missing an invoice. So while I am adding, let's say, for example, I'll bring up this one. Uh, this does not have an invoice number. So uh, there's a document number. What I can do here is I can highlight this, right click on it. I can copy that as text. 
Now, when I go back to my accounting system, I said I want to enter a bill. I can right click here, paste that, and now add in all the other details. Even if I didn't have the document handy, I've scanned it, I've indexed it, I found it. I'm missing it during my reconciliation process. I say, oh, I'm missing that invoice. It's on my statement. So same thing with printing purchase orders. So I'm gonna bring up my email again. And let's go to Ronnie. So instead of me printing to a piece of paper, I'm gonna print, and you see where it says here, finance export. It could be human resources export, accounting export, whatever you wanna call it. Now I'm gonna print that. I'm gonna get a little notification that a document's been printed into my pre-indexing folder. If I go back to my document management system, I'm going to skip. I have all these here that there we go. Question. So, in summary, that was a brief overview of Docket. Um, which is an information management system, which comprises digital printing, storage and retrieval, anywhere, anytime, any place, any medium. And here's, here's a really interesting thing about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to QuickBooks as an example. QuickBooks does have the ability to scan documents. But if you would ask anybody who's using QuickBooks where those documents are, they will not be able to find them. If they changed, I mean, I can tell you how to find them, but if you were to go to anybody you know using QuickBooks, say, bring up all your documents that are in QuickBooks. I challenge them to find it. Why? It's not any place in QuickBooks that's visible. It's actually in, you'd have to go into the, into the your hard drive, into your C drive, where QuickBooks is located. Uh, so I'm just going to give you an example of it. I could even find it myself. Uh, sorry, wrong place. Into it. I mean, I'm and I sell this stuff, right? Right. It would take me a while. To, I think it's on the common files. It's. Uh, my whole point is it's not a place yeah. that's actually present up front. You have to go look for it, look for it. And if a company were to change accounting systems, they can't move their files they need. The other thing I like to use as an example, people say, well, I, you know, I scan things as PDFs. That's great, find them. I've, I'm gonna use my own computer as an example. If I were to bring up OneDrive, you can see here is dozens of folders um, in the, I'll bring up a documents folder. Uh, well, that's actually on my, bring up here in my doc. So this is traditionally what people go through. They, they start looking for things. Here's a scan document folder now PDFs. You'd have to search your search. You follow right. what I mean? There's no way for me to actually find anything that easy without having to search for it. Now I can search here and search scan documents and I can, you know, hopefully find what I'm looking for, but not as easy as I has, if I had scanned it and indexed it. So in this example, it's probably would be able to bring up BOCES. Is an invoice, is a service agreement. You know, if, if I know what I'm looking for, uh, here's 431299. I'll just use that one as an example. 431299. 
Can you see how that would benefit any business? How fast it is to find what you're looking for? And I yes. said, there's my document. Boom. So okay, I have a, go on. I have a question. So let's say a, a, a company, um, I'm going to use an example of a, a law firm or an accounting firm or whatever, has all these file cabinets. Do they have to, how do they, how do they go from that to this? That takes a lot of, talk about time. Okay, like, so I have a good answer for that one. Some people may like it, some people may not like it. So there's two ways companies approach that. One is what they do is called forward scanning. We start from today, we go forward and we right. slowly work backwards. You know, if employees have off time, maybe they're not busy, they go to the scanner and they just start scanning away. Or maybe they hire an intern. Right. The other option is to hire us as a service. And we'll pick up your boxes, we'll scan them, and send them back to you. Or we can have a scan router set up where you can scan them in your own office and they'll show back up in your OneDrive folder to be indexed. So that does uh, have um, a labor cost to it. Or, but in the end. Or I'll just bring up here, here's a PDF file. Like this is a PDF right now. If I have documents already in my system, I bring them up as PDFs and I just print them. When you say print them, I know you're not really printing, but you're, or you are really printing. I'm printing digitally. You're printing digitally. So then it goes into a, a, a digital file that's your printed documents file. Right, so this is a PDF that I received. So I'm, I'll go back to easiest way to do it. If I were to bring up an email, Okay, here's an invoice. Um, well, that's one I sent somebody, uh, but I, I'll use this for example. So let's say that was an invoice that came in to me or an existing invoice. So I have PDFs already in my folders. I can open them back up. And I would, instead of me printing to my copier or my printer, I'm gonna print that, turn it to my export folder. And when I print that, I'll get a little notification that it's been printed. And when I come back to my document management system, to index those, it'll be the last one there. Right. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, so these are all, this skip, this was, no, not skip document. Okay, so it's a folder. It's a folder that has all of the printed documents. Right. And you can share to other people from here, obviously. You must be able to, right? Well, the sharing process is that anybody who has this sitting on their desktop, huh. and depending on how they want their folder structure set up for sharing, through Windows file sharing services, you can control who has access to what. So if your folder structure is set up where in OneDrive, you only want Betty and Mary only to have access to those folders, we can set that up. If you wanted everybody to have access, we set that up. So you tell us who, who has access, who doesn't. Well, what if you're sitting in front of a client, a customer, whatever, and you want to pull up from your phone, you wanna be able to share this particular document with the guy who's sitting across from you, but he doesn't have this. You would bring it document. up on your phone. And then you could share it from, you can share it from there? Well, you could email it, you could- You could email it, you can, okay. The, the, the reason we use the phone as an example is 
for example, a sales rep, uh, a, a technician, a driver. Uh, I like to use the construction industry. Let's say, for example, <clears throat> and this is a real world example. I won't mention the company. They're very big here in Long Island. They still use fax machines, as far as I know, for processing their paperwork. So somebody orders a door and they order a left-hand swing door. The door gets shipped out, ends up on a job site, but it turns up it's a right-hand swing door. Well, it's the wrong door. Well, whose fault was that? Did the clerk who wrote the order write down the wrong order? Did the customer order the wrong door? So whose responsibility was it? They could bring it up right on their phone. Hey, no, you ordered a left-hand swing door. You ordered the wrong door. It's not our right. fault. Instantly bring it up. Or if they're using tablets, I don't have my tablet here, but if you have a computer with you, you can bring these up because as long as you have cloud storage, you can retrieve it from anywhere. Right. So what happens if a person, if a company uses this, this decides they're going to go with this system mm -hmm. and they hire and they buy it from you? What kind of support do they get? Because I mean, this is a, the, the, the learning curve is, I don't know, steep. Uh, it's actually very quick learning. We have support both here and in Ireland. Um, so my partner's in Ireland for the UK. Okay. And we're doing it here. Uh, now I breeze through this fairly quickly with you, but it's, it's actually pretty simple to use. It's um, once everything is set up and we can set it all up remotely as well. Um, it's pretty simple to use. So the, the core components are all installed. We can also do what's called barcode scanning. So maybe you don't need all the detail. If you go, if you look here, there's only four fields here. Maybe you only want one or two. Maybe you want 10. Uh, you can be as simple oh. as complex. Now for barcode scanning, some organizations only need to have everything go into one place. Let's say by the name of the vendor. In that case, you can actually have a barcode sticker that is slapped on top of a piece of paper. So an invoice comes in, you print a barcode that gets slapped on the paper, it's scanned, and that automatically tells it where to go. No manual entry. So uh, another example I like to give, and I'm gonna kind of show you this, like an Outlook, let's say now with everyone using email statements and invoicing, we could also have it set up where, see the word invoice right here? We yeah. can set it up where any invoice coming from SBDC automatically gets printed right into it just by the in, just by the email coming in no manual entry we come in and all we know is there's oh here's a thing from SBDC because it came in by email what other kind of document storage systems are there? Is there competition for this docket? <clears throat> There's <clears throat> tons of document management systems. The big benefit that we provide here is number one, it's simple. There's not a huge learning curve. There's other systems out there that are very difficult to, to learn, very complex and very expensive. We're none of those. Um, there are other systems that probably can do many more functions, but for the average business owner who only wants to try to cut costs and get rid of the paper, this is very simple. It's not proprietary. And what I mean by that, if I bring up my this folder right here, <clears throat> and I'm gonna change the view to a list. 
All these are TIFF files. I can export this entire folder to a new computer. Um, TIFF files are standard image on a computer. You don't need any software at all to view a TIFF image because it's a picture. So if I change computers or I change accounting systems, I change from QuickBooks to Peachtree, I can export every one of these without it being proprietary. So it's not sitting inside our document management system. This is sitting, whether it's on a server or in the cloud, it's your documents sitting where you want them, not inside our system. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but some document management systems stored in proprietary format where you have to use their software to get the documents back. Right. We're using Windows file services. So these are just sitting in Windows. And any document here that I want to find, I can just double click on it. So if I change computers, I change accounting systems, I can just take this entire folder, which is here in OneDrive. It's right here. This folder right here is mine for my business. I just right click on that. I copy it or I send it. I could put it on a thumb drive, no fun, Leslie. But <laughs> and I move it to my new system. So how how popular is this? How well, how, you know, is it used? Is it well known? It's very system? well known in Ireland. And um, okay. I, I will, we have several customers here in Long Island using it. Uh, we're, we're launching it as a separate company shortly. We're building out the website now for Docket USA as a, um, in two ways to either have it sold through either copier dealers or as a software as a service in the cloud. So right now we're working in three stages. One is selling it direct. Second would be selling it through channel dealers and other vendors. And the third is software as a service, which we're, we're building that out. That's not ready to go to market yet. We're still working that out where people maybe want to just have it on a subscription basis up in the cloud. So oh, they can do that. I, 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 that was another question I had. Is it something that they pay for yearly? Is it, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be updates and all of that. So somehow they have to pay for it on a regular basis, right? You don't buy it once and then you're done. Well, we can sell it outright. We can also sell it by users. Like if you have five users, it would be a five user price. We're going to have different levels like silver, <laughs> bronze, gold, enterprise. The structure, you know, we do all the installation, we set up, we'll train, and we can have somebody up and running very quickly. So I kind of breeze through a lot of the stuff quickly. And so it, it's really, in a nutshell, pretty simple. Once it's all set up, you capture your documents. If I'm going to click on my, if I click on scan, this is going to launch my scan button to my, my little printer. Um, and that's only because it's a twain drive driven one. My copier, my Konica Minolta copier has a scan to button. So I can load up all my documents. I hit a scan button and they, they all send them right into this folder here um, to be indexed. Again, the indexing here can be as few fields as you want, as many fields as you want. You can do granular searches. So for example, if I were to go into retrieve and say, I'm looking for BOCES and I put an asterisk in here and a number, I don't have a number in my head, but uh, that would get granular. So if I were to take, here's one, one, two, one, nine, two, seven. I'm just gonna give you an example. One, two, one, nine, two, seven. If I were to type that 
0.27. In my search criteria and look for, you can see it went right to that particular invoice. So I can search by the invoice number. I could do wildcard searches. If I were to, there's a little, you can, I don't know if you can see the asterisk right there, but that's if you want to get granular. So I can do, uh, I don't even have to spell the whole thing. If I were to use the word, uh, here, I'm going to use PAX and I use the vendor called PAX8. I don't have to type the whole word. I could just type parts of the word. So, all right, well, that's, so how so, expensive is this? Uh, not expensive at all, depending on the number of users. I would say on average, it's going to be about $49 a month per user. Uh, enterprise, it's going to be a lot more money. If somebody wanted unlimited users, it'll be more money. Because there's more uh, involved, more training, the more people. Right. Um, but for the SBDC members or members that we have, I can work out special pricing for any SBDC members. Well, I'm thinking that two, two I'm thinking right off the bat of two people that I'd like to, to tell about this presentation. And one would be, um, I think a law firm, like maybe I'll talk to, I'll, I'll let the woman know at Campolo because that is a paper intensive business. You know, I mean, there's so many businesses that are just so used to using paper. I, I just don't know, but law firms. I can tell you, I going back to my spreadsheet for the calculator, this would literally, literally cost them nothing compared yeah, to what you have, you're paying in labor. Yeah. I mean, you have people in law firms who all they do is, is go through file cabinets. That's their job, you know, just for well, cheap. Website paper. storage. Um, I, what know, about, I, what well, about presenting to the HIA? I've been trying to present to the HIA. I actually did two webinars uh, last month. We're going to, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to do some lunch and learns. That might be the best thing that I can do if we can get in front of people. Uh, a lot of people were confused when I mentioned the word document management. They, I don't think they all, they all grasp exactly what that means to them and what it means on the back end in terms of what it costs them not to use it. Or if I use my story that I gave you with the, with the Allstate example. That was a good example. You should that, use that example. And for my own example, how long it took me to gen regenerate the paperwork uh, in my lost time and, and labor hours um, because I didn't have it anymore. So once you've scanned stuff and archived it, going back to even your example you were saying before, once you've scanned something or printed it, it's there. And if you need it, you print it on demand right. versus, versus storing everything in filing cabinets. And I know plenty of companies that have rows and rows and rows of filing cabinets. And if you think of the cost of real estate on Long Island, $25 or $35 a square foot, a, a yeah. standard filing cabinet is probably costing, they're about six square feet. Mm. So multiply, do the math. Yeah. I mean, what, about, have, what about doctor's offices? Although they're mm. now, you know, they, they have their systems now where everything's getting, you know, they have a document management system, whatever it is, medical record system or something, right? Not, not as good as they ought to be. Let me tell you personally, my doctor's because- Because comes out with a big file. Yes. Goes through paper, and, paper, and, paper. And, Ron, and Ronnie, it's not just that. It's because when I needed information from when I was in the emergency room, Valentine's Day 2019, and I went back to my doctor, even though I'd given Stony Brook ER all my doctor's information, my doctor hadn't gotten that information or yeah. said that they hadn't gotten it. Yeah, I know. I know. Mm. No. Yeah, and then you think about all the doctors that one patient has, you mm -hmm. know, and the records that are, but, but getting people to switch to this, getting people to understand that That's they're saving time 
it's a very, very um, big thing. curve. Yeah. Because especially the older you are, the less likely you are to, to, to accept a new way of doing things mm -hmm. like this. It's just, that's mm -hmm. the hard part is training people. Well, one of my favorite examples that I like to use is in a traditional office for customer service where a phone call comes in and the customer at the other end says, do you have a copy of this? Do you have a copy of my invoice? Do you have a copy of my purchase sort of copy of my medical records? Mm -hmm. And the standard answer is two things. I'll put you on hold while I go look for it or mm -hmm. I'm going to have to call you back. Yeah. Where if that happens to me and someone says, Mike, I need my invoice. I can just go and I don't, I'm going to use it <laughs> again. I don't know what I'm looking for, but I know they say I need a copy of my toner invoice. And I can say, hold on, it's coming to your email in about three seconds. Mm -hmm. There's so no question that this is a service isn't... standpoint and a customer satisfaction standpoint. What would you rather be told? I'm going to put you on hold. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call you back mm -hmm. or it's coming to your email in about two seconds. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm thinking insurance companies. I'm thinking car dealerships. I'm thinking, you know, I mean, I, there's a million a million uh, businesses that would could use this, but it's getting people to switch over and yeah. do all the work to get it moved over is, is, but like you said, to go from here forward mm -hmm. is probably the best thing, but still we have situations, right? I mean, in our simple little office where I'll say, do, what about this particular client? And we go looking for the file, somebody gets up, they try to find it or on the computer, they look for it. I mean, this is very convenient, but yes. you know, it was good. It was a good presentation. Well, I'll do what I can do. To, are you done? Yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop recording. Thank good you. idea. So I'll reach out.